from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Digital transformation is the operative watchword today, but what does it mean from a CXO's standpoint? And how do you take those perspectives and bring them into an organization to affect its strategy and turn that strategy into action? Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante. Welcome to this CUBE Conversations. Uh, from CXO perspectives, I'm here with Paul Lewis, who is CTO of Americas from Hitachi Ventara. Paul, thanks for coming down from Toronto. Thanks very much, I appreciate it. It's always great to be in Boston. Okay, let's start with you and your background. You're a CIO by trade, been with Hitachi and now Hitachi Ventara for a few years, but tell us about your background. Yeah, so I've been here about five years, uh, running the office of the CTO, which is a highly vertical-based organization. Uh, prior to that, I was the CIO, CTO of a financial services organization for about 17 years. Operating technology, sort of being a practitioner of what it means mm -hmm. to create applications and operate IT and implement projects and worry about you know, the blinking lights in a data center. Uh, so it's a very different world being on the manufacturer side, but getting to see different verticals, different industries and applying that uh, has been uh, intellectually appealing. So something I want to come back to, so you were CIO and CTO, right. uh, which is not uncommon, uh, but oftentimes you know, CIO is you know, more in a strategy or a pure business role. You had both, so we'll come back to that when we talk about sure. you know, or organizational issues. But let's start with digital transformation. As I said at the top, it's the buzzword. You go to every conference, digital transformation, you must, you, you must not get eaten by your competitors, you must be the disruptor, et cetera, et cetera. But what does digital transfer, transformation mean to you as a, as a CTO, CIO, from a customer's perspective? So I see it much more as being, having a customer perspective when you look at your business strategy. So in as much as people say sort of customer 360 or, or you're taking a customer centric approach, it's not really that. It's, it's saying, how do I look at my business and evaluate it from the customer's point of view? So you know the three aspects of digital transformation is operational efficiency, new business models, and of course the new customer experience. So operational efficiency says, you know, if I'm doing a whole bunch of things or to deliver value, a product or a service, but the only thing the customer sees is what's on the shelf and what's available to, to purchase, then everything I do behind the scenes, logistics, is up for grabs. Maybe I don't, it's not an, as important to me as what's on the shelf, so maybe somebody else can do it. Make that efficiency. In terms of new business models, if all my competitors, especially those new digital disruptors, have a new way of engaging with the client on the payment, maybe it's a credit card versus cash, you know, capital versus OPEX, maybe I need to diversify my portfolio to be equivalent to that, to find customers that I'm currently not getting. And then finally, new customer experiences. This is the customer point of view to say, the customer wants to buy from you in a certain way. So you better start to sell your products and service in the way to which they want to buy. Just because your product's on the shelf and the customer wants to buy from you online means you have to also be online. And if your customer wants to buy from your competitor, your product should be at your competitor, right? So you've got to think about how the customer buys, not just how you sell. So all that sort of business strategy. So well, we, we can poke that a little bit, so uh, in a positive way. So <laughs> uh, you know, when you go back to pre-internet days, the brands had all the power. Right. The retail companies knew what the pricing was. You know, the, the 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 spreads in the stock market were really large. We had Nasdaq on last week at Pentaho World. All we talked about is how they're becoming basically a technology company to sell their services to others. I mean, they are transforming digitally. So, my my point and question to you is: Isn't a lot of digital transformation about how you use data to compete and, and actually maybe regain? some of that you know, market power or, or, or at least catch up to where the consumers are because the consumers today have all the advantage, don't they? Well, data certainly is a value producer <laughs> versus sort of a side effect that it used to be. But it is fair that the consumers have much more buying power than they have before. And that's, that's in many ways because of those disruptors. Those disruptors are creating new options for consumers and, option, and now consumers have that choice. In fact, the, co the consumerization as a whole is changing how consumers even perceive companies. Right, so if I can download an app and if I don't like it an hour, I can delete that app and download another, they can also choose your product in the same way. They're going to buy your product, they don't like it, they're going to throw it away and buy somebody else's product. They now have the ultimate choice to do anything they wish, buy from anybody they want to, 
locally or globally. The globalization concept is changing the way you need to distribute your products and services too. Yeah, so the power mm -hmm. actually and influence has gone to the consumer and it's only data that you can produce and you can consume externally uh, that'll give you that insight to determine where I need to put my puck, right? Where I need to, a hockey analogy, where I need to ensure that um, I need to have my product and service and available before the customer wants it or they even perceive to want it uh, versus sort of waiting behind the scenes. So the big difference between, let's say, being digital versus non-digital is the data. Yep. Um, but what does that mean to a, a, a CTO and a CIO? So, okay, data, that's the big difference. <laughs> now what? <laughs> I would say, let's take it from the top. So if the CEO now is focused on creating more value quicker, mm -hmm. uh, they probably hire a chief digital officer that's focused on those three pillars. Uh, if the organization is not that big, they might have the CIO perform that function. That means the CIO is less about order taking and more about value creation. The only way they're going to be a value creator is if they move from an application-centric world of IT to a data-centric world of IT. And I, I, I use an analogy of applications, infrastructure, and applications. You want me to go through that way? Yeah, absolutely. So here's, to hear more about that. here's the difference between infrastructure, applications, and data. If I look at infrastructure, it lasts, let's say, three to five years. I might be able to sweat it out any longer, but if I, if I do, I'm going to have performance, scalability, availability problems. Um, if I add more infrastructure to infrastructure, it's going to cost me more money. I need more space, I need more power, I need more rack, right? Uh, same kind of true on the application side. If I, that the last maybe seven to nine years, maybe sweat it out any longer, I have same performance and scalability problems. If I add more applications to applications, I have modernization and simplification and rationalization problems. And it's not the number of applications that matter, it's that I have the same function point recreated across five to 10 different applications and five to different 10 teams worrying about it. Same cost issue. And, and, and data quality issue. Absolutely. <laughs> but data is in fact the opposite to that. Data is valuable to me from the point that I create it to the point that I delete it, if I ever delete it. In fact, seeing data change over time is more valuable than seeing it static in its initial state. If I add more data to data, the bigger potential pot of gold I have and the nuggets that I can find, the more precise my algorithms become, the more uh, insightful I'll be able to create um, from a client's perspective or from product or transaction perspective. In fact, it is the value creator for IT versus the side effect that it's always been. So if you remove the centricity from the CIO from application, which is red, green, yellow projects, to data being the value creator, you start to be a major player in the digital transformation organization instead of sort of being the order taker of projects. That, so there was a lot of things you said in there that made a lot of sense to me. Um, let me start with sort of the infrastructure. There's a lot of CIOs that spend have to spend their time keeping the lights on. And that's not a value producing activity, we can agree. There were, and still are, many CIOs that so were application centric, as you were saying, and they would add a lot of value through the, those applications. They had a you know, sharp application development team, they could differentiate through those applications. But increasingly, when I talk to CIOs, you see more SaaS coming into play and they're trying to avoid custom modifications. So when I ask them, well, how do you differentiate? The differentiation is the data. The right. data and the IP that we build around that data, the way that data helps us monetize, um, whether it's directly or indirectly, is our new differentiator. But that's a big shift, isn't it? it it's a large shift, because they're, they're completely application-centric. All their projects are about versioning of applications. All their infrastructure is creating highly available for applications. So the big shift is say, how do I create an organization that's uh, data-centric as a whole? How do I create a chief data officer? and that data officer is elevated to be the peer of, in many ways, the VP of application, the VP of infrastructure. Their organization has all the data-centric responsibilities. They have storage and protection and governance and analytics and stewardship. They are the measured by uh, the value they produce for the organization, whether that's operational efficiency or revenue, versus the projects to which they deliver on. And that way the output of IT is not just projects, it's not just spend, but it's in fact revenue or profit. Let's talk about the organizational roles. Uh, I said I wanted to come back to that, and I do, I, I, you, know, you know the jokes, CIO stands for career is over. I was interviewing uh, John Halamka, who was the CIO of Beth Israel Hospital, uh, a while back at MIT, one of the shows we do, and he was not optimistic about the role of the CIO. He said, hey, it could disappear, and the conversation, it was a CDO conference, Chief Data Officer Conference, 
the conversation was, well, CIOs need to pick a path, and you've got some experience here. They either have to become CTOs or they have to become chief data officers. Now, that was maybe two years ago. I think the narrative has changed a little bit, and people have calmed down about that, but you've seen this, these roles emerge, chief data officer, chief digital officer. We just talked about how digital equals data, so I actually see those two roles as you know, more closely you know, aligned or not, um, <laughs> depending on, on the other. But, and the CIO's role, I think, you know, becoming more clear uh, as, as a business and strategy person, but I wonder if you could weigh in as a former CIO slash CTO, current CTO, you talk to a lot of customers, how do you see organizations, you know, what's the right regime? Uh, right regime is not the right, the, not the proper term, but what's the regime that you see emerging? I think the big shift determining what those organization roles are from standardization to, vers to diversification. So it's less about single provider, single process, single implementation, having a uh, mm. single set of IT services for all the potential workloads and more like what does the business and specific the line of business require and then how am I going to support that? So it's now I'm going to have um, internal services, I'm going to have a private cloud, I'm going to use public cloud offerings, I'm going to have managed services, I'm going to go to third party offerings, I'm going to use a bunch of SaaS, I'm going to consume a lot of cloud versions of ERP type products and that's the complexity of my environment. And if that's the complexity of my environment, that's the complexity and change of the shift of the roles. The CIO now has to be less about project delivery, in other words, creating applications, and more about managing an ecosystem of diverse uh, deployments. They have to manage relationships with public clouds. They have to manage and create business offerings with the CFO and the CEO and the chief um, uh, corporate officer in terms of creating new acquisitions or mergers, right? Uh, the CTO is focused on creating a highly secure framework of delivery so that not only the IT shop can deliver on value, but all that shadow IT that's happening out external to create a platform and a secure platform for them to, de to deliver. Because the reality is, of every $100 that the CIO has, there's $250 out in the business. So why don't you make a $350, million, $350 IT budget instead of 100 one? You do that by providing platforms. And so therefore the CIO is part of the business leader versus being the IT leader. Uh, the CTO is looking at platforms um, and therefore the chief data officer becomes the value producer. They're the one focused almost entirely on creating revenue or creating so much efficiency in the organization that the profit margins dramatically increase. So now business perspective, business perspective, business perspective um, and everything underlying is ecosystem. It's not everything that I build, it's things that I consume externally. Wow, okay, so again, a lot of things you said in there that, that make some sense and I want to better understand. So the chief data officer, as you described it, sort of job one for her or him is to is understand how to essentially make money with data. Right. All right, and, and again, I don't want to say go sell your data, because that's not always the answer, no. but you're saying you can drive efficiencies. Uh, at the simplest form, you can cut costs or you can increase revenue. Or you can make better decisions, right? That's the whole champion and challenger concept. Right. Uh, you can have a better understanding of your clients or your products, and more importantly, have a better understanding of clients to which currently don't purchase your products, right? How do I look at internal information and compare it to external data to say, well, how are those other consumers that are going to other my other disruptors, what are they purchasing? And why can't I produce something that's like, or at least competitive in that world? So you started off this conversation with three things, the operational efficiency, new business models, and the customer experience. So yeah. the, certainly the chief data officer, as you just mentioned, can affect operational efficiency, ways to cut cost you know, through data. Sure. And I guess they touch new business models as well. Hey, if we're going to, monetize our data directly, or a partner, or bring in other data. And, you know, we talked about yeah. NASDAQ before, that's a completely new business Or even model. working with the finance office to say, if I were to make changes to my business, here would be the net financial effect. Right, right? okay. Now, the customer experience, is that the domain of the chief digital officer? Really more in that customer facing role? Still, Still a combination, but I would agree that the chief digital officer is focusing on creating to matching the selling experience with the buying experience. And mm -hmm. that might be new mobile interfaces, this might be 
uh, creating omni-channel experiences or expanding upon that to say, how do we ensure that we have an integrated channel experience? It's not just that they can buy you know, a shoe and the website and a shoe in a store. It's that they can go online, look at the shoes, go to the store, have those shoes be brought down automatically as soon as I walked in, and then choose whether I buy it now, take it home, buy it online, have it delivered to my house before I get home, or it's $5 cheaper, five stores down. Right? Okay. So that experience will be chief digital officer, but all of that requires data. One can't deliver on all of that unless they have a, a deep understanding of their uh, products, a deep understanding of how the transactions, a deep understanding of how clients buy. All of that's experience data based, whether it's mobile or human created or business data, all combined together. In fact, that's actually a great uh, jump into the sort of the IoT world, the machine or the physical world where I now need to appreciate data that's happening in the store, in the kiosk, and all of that experience data needs to be brought back and combined with the financial data to really appreciate what the transition of that e digital experience might so be. So those, those roles do really span you know, your three areas. And I, can, I can see, just think, hearing, hearing you speak, the chief digital officer might go to the chief data officer and say, hey, I need this data so I can create a customer experience that gives us competitive advantage and I need that data to be accessible, of high quality, I maybe need you to pull in some other data points. Exactly, I need real time, I need it yeah. blended, <laughs> I need it integrated with my ERP. Make it, it so. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it, that can't be too hard, And right? then, then that involves the CIO to actually provide the infrastructure and whatever SaaS or internal applications. Exactly, find, find a means to solve the problem. And it's not going to always be build. It's likely going to be consumed. It's likely going to be buy. It's likely going to be partner. And so All that's part of that. Historically, it was the application kind of tail wagging the dog. Now it's the data that is really sort of the driver Absolutely. of the bus. Which is why re you really need what we refer to as a data strategy for digital transformation. Mm -hmm. Creating a set of services or capabilities that are focused much more on data than IT. Like we're used to saying IT services. Make sure you have compute and storage and networking available to you. But now it's saying, you know what, you have business data, let's make sure you have services like store and manage and govern. You have human sets of data, that's blend and correlate and match. And then you have machine data. Well, that's much more about grid and point and and, uh, and IoT related correlations. I need to bring all that together as a series of data servers to which IT provides to the chief digital officer. Okay, you talked about the edge before. How yeah. do you see, I mean, we're seeing the pendulum now swing back from centralized you know, cloud to sort of decentralized. This notion of edge to cloud is probably not going to happen. It's going to be some stuff in between, but how do you see, let's follow the data. Yeah. How do you see, and Hitachi and Hitachi Ventara has obviously a perspective on this. You guys are an industrial you know, giant. How, wh what's Hitachi Ventara's perspective on how the edge will evolve generally, but specifically how the data model and the data flow will change? So we see an enterprise information model has having sort of four legs to this table, right? And that one should keep data where it is because sometimes it's physically impossible to move data from where it was created to where it needs to be for analytics. A, a train is an example, and we produce you know, a high-speed train. That could be four, or five, seven terabytes per day. Well, that's almost physically impossible to move to a server to be able to deal with, right? And when you look at larger machines like nuclear power plants and well treatment centers, all of a sudden it's almost impossible. So these four legs are, you know, you still need an enterprise data warehouse. You still need a means to collect your business data and produce your thousands of MIS reports. They actually run the business. That is a $10 million machine to which you've created. You then need a, you need a, a content store, an object store, because you have all this human unstructured data to which, in fairness, a good portion of it might be dark. A good portion of it, like your 27 versions of your PowerPoint, simply won't have any production nuggets of gold, okay. right? But you still have lots of voice and video records and unstructured files that, that could contain nuggets. Then you have your, your big data lake where you want to put your um, information that you want to do perform an analytics on, right? You, it's, it's, you don't want to worry about the data model. You don't want to worry about how you're structuring the information until you actually do analytics on it. And then finally, the edge. Keeping data where it is. Have a federated distributed model and only when I want to do and perform specific analytics, do I go collect that information, bring it to the core, perform the analytics, produce visualization result. We kind of re refer to this as a, as a data refinement mechanism where I'm searching for the appropriate information using those mathematical statistical algorithms in order to create you know, visualizations that we can bl 
blend right back into the original sources. So a lot of data will be created at the edge and, and it'll stay at the edge. In fact, a lot of data probably won't be even be persisted at the edge. It'll be maybe acted on, thrown away, and you'll save what you need to save. Is that e fair Exactly, and you, and you could say that there's going to be data that's at the edge that persists or not. You might have data which might be referred to as the fog, where <coughs> you would collect it at the CO or at the PO, right? Uh, and you want or the pop, and you want to be able to um, perform analytics with a little bit more compute. You might bring some of that data centrally because you want to combine it and blend it with other information, and then you might actually put it into the cloud because you want to combine other organizational related data and do very complex highly mathematical problem set. So we almost see it from sort of edge to outcome, where mm -hmm. there's edge processing, fog processing, uh, uh, core processing, and then cloud processing. Okay, so let's unpack that a little bit in the time we have remaining. So you got the, the, at least a three, maybe even a four, maybe it's a three and a three A tier model. Edge, <coughs> that, that second tier gateway uh, right. aggregation point where you're doing some analytics, and then the third tier, and I guess maybe the fourth tier, let's call it your, your own cloud, private cloud, or maybe the public cloud, where you're doing the heavy modeling, right. and the training of the models, and then maybe you're shipping the model back down to Absolutely. wherever. Because it's now modifying the machine, potentially, or the machine's understanding of data, and then you're collecting new data based on that new algorithm to which you're now pushing out. All right, we don't have time, but that just whole, totally changes the whole security paradigm as well. Absolutely. And so, and, uh, well, Paul, thanks very much for, for coming on uh, the, the Cube and having this Cube conversation. Really excellent uh, work that you're doing. Congratulations and keep it up. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, thanks for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante and this is Cube Conversations. We'll see you next time.